Hello everyone, this is Fergal Panda here with an updated review of an Amazon e-bike I got. I've had this for over a year now. I've done an initial review on this in the past, but this is a review and just a ride around Boyd Lake. Uh, this is a state park in Colorado located near Loveland, Colorado. Actually in Loveland, Colorado, I guess you would say. Anyway, this bike, this is one of those 600, sub 600 bikes, really almost sub 500 bikes. They're usually around $400. Usually they, they you don't get free shipping even on Amazon. It's usually like 100 bucks or so. If you can find one with free shipping, go for it. This is what you call a white label bike. It can have different brands on it. Um, I'll leave some links for it. So Hamo. Um, there's a bunch of different brands, but they're basically white label bikes. They all have the same specs and they all look about the same too. This bike has um, 400 watts. It's a 400 watt bike, um, 14 inch uh, tires on it. Um, it is 48 volts, 12 AH, um, has shock absorbers in the front. It has like a little seat in the back. I would guess it's more so to carry stuff on it. it has an electronic horn. Um, here's the funny thing about it. So I have an electric XP 3.0 um, long range. It costs about fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars, something like that. Maybe it's thirteen. I don't remember. This bike cost almost one third of what that bike cost, and it didn't even come with a um, bell. It didn't even come with a cheap one dollar bell. This one has an electronic horn that's actually really loud. Uh, it has a little multi-shock or uh, springy seat. It's actually a pretty comfortable seat. It, the battery, like I said, it's 48 volts, 12 AH. It's a pretty fat um, battery. It seems to be built pretty good. I've had it over a year. My wife will ride it here and there, but honestly, I ride it more than she does. And I'm torn between taking this and also it has a headlight and a stoplight, uh, brake light on the back. Um, torn between taking this and or taking my electric XP when I go on a road trip in a couple weeks honestly about uh, maybe a month actually because this does take up less room weight wise weight is in I would say 60 some pounds low 60s it is a chunky little bike for having 14 inch tires it's 400 watts many people would say well isn't it a little underpowered no, I've had 250 watt bikes, and honestly, 400 watts seem pretty adequate. It will do 22 miles an hour all day. It has good zip to it. Um, it folds up pretty clean. You've seen me fold it up before in other videos or unfold it. Um, it's for people four foot eight to six foot. I am six foot. I'm at the higher threshold of it, and my knees will touch the handlebars if I put the seat all the way up. The trick to it, what I found was, is to drop the seat lower. Though I don't get full extensions on my legs that way, I've gotten accustomed to it, and honestly, it rides much better for me. If you're shorter or you have shorter legs, you won't have any problems. But that's with me, and I'm talking about touching it. I don't touch it all the time, but I can touch the handlebars with my knees when it's all the way up um, I'll leave links in the description um, but honestly I do like riding this little bike it's cheap it's easy it doesn't take a lot of room so it doesn't take up a lot of room which I think is very essential especially depending on what type of car you're you're uh, driving if you're like taking it on like road trips is it a good um, RV park bike or camping bike I would say yes um, like I said, 400 watts, at first I was a little, mm, seems a little underpowered because I'm used to 500 watts. You know, it's now 700, 750 watts. Now they're up to like 1,000, a lot of them standard. But the 400 watts, this thing goes. And like I said, it does 22 miles an hour. And I think 22 miles an hour is the higher threshold of it for the size of the tires. But it does it all day. It has throttle and it has... Um, you know it's a good hub motor to be honest with you i think it's built pretty well it is a single speed so you don't you can't shift like uh you can't do different gears and all that stuff so it is a single speed but that's okay and as i said for my height and my size which i'm still i might be a little under 200 pounds here and there give or take a day or two depends on what i'm eating um it's fine. It pull, it hauls me around with no problem. It doesn't strain or anything like that. Now, if you were like lighter than me, say you were 150 pounds, or you're 120 pounds, or say you're 5'7", five, 5'8", five, you're 5'3", this this bike will fly on you. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. My uh, wife gets on it sometimes. She thinks it's like really fast, but she also weighs like you know 80 pounds less than me or something like that.
Um, so yeah, you will fly on this bike, but me on it, it goes great. Like I would have no problem taking this bike to the city and riding around. Um, you know, somebody always get in the comments, say, Oh, be like a clown bike. It's not like a clown bike. Anybody who sees it can look at it and say, Oh, it's a smaller E bike, but it's not the super, super tiny ones. There's a lot smaller ones than this. It's just a small folding bike, um, locks in place when it's folded. I don't worry about it. Um, coming apart on me you're not going to jump anything with this This ain't that type of bike this is the type of bike to ride around your campground it's the type of bike to go run errands on it's the type of bike if you were to go to a city you're traveling on the road and you want to like oh let me go ride around the neighborhoods go check out some stuff like you know if you see any of my videos you'll see me doing that a lot of times or the park or whatever it's one of those bikes uh, but super trail riding no you can get on a little dirt trail here and there yes no problem um, I may take this with me on my road trip. I'm going to probably take an electric XP 3.0. But if I did take this, one thing I haven't done and I've neglected, which I made sure I prepared for with my electric and all my 20-inch fat tire bikes, is now I have a bunch of tubes that I take with me. I do not have any extra tubes, which I need to get on Amazon and actually order some. It's better to have them and get a flat than be somewhere where <laughs> you get a flat and you can't change the tire because you don't have any tubes. See one of my old videos, I ran into that when I got a flat on my old electric XP 1.0. Yeah, it was my fault. I wasn't well prepared, and it was a Sunday, so I couldn't go to the Rad Power Shop and buy a tube for my electric XP. Anyway, so do I recommend this bike? Yes, I do. I think for the value of it, I think it's cheap, but I think it's built pretty well. They're white label bikes, so they th they slap different brands on them, but they're probably made in the, all the same factory. I think it has good power. 22 miles an hour is very adequate for this. 400 watts is excellent, and like I said, the lighter side, you're going to do even better. It says the payload capacity on this is 230 to 230 pounds or so. I'd say if you you were heavier than that, you could ride this bike. Um, I, like I said, though, I would not be doing trying to do jump hills and all this stuff on this bike. No, I wouldn't do that on any folding bike or it might fold on you. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, so I'm riding around Boyd Lake Park or excuse me, uh, Boyd Lake State Park in Colorado. You can see it's a beautiful day. Basically, my wife took our Frenchie. We have another dog, Max, French Bulldog, and she went in kayaking. I was bored. Well, I was going to ride my bike anyway, so I brought the bike and I brought one of my scooters. I'll leave a link for my High Boy scooter too, which I'm going to take on my next uh, big road trip with an e-bike. Uh, sometimes I don't want to pull out the e-bike. I just want to hop on a scooter and ride around a little downtown or something. As you saw, I did in my video at Port, at Port Angeles in Washington. Um, so now I'm just riding over, just trying to catch her. I wanted to get a little video of the her and the Frenchie because I don't think, or maybe she did take him out before in the kayak. So just to see him on it. Uh, so he's our newer dog. We've had him for a little bit now. You used to see my old videos, Bear. I miss old Bear, uh, but he, you know, passed away. Uh, so she, he's the only little dog. He's the only dog we have, and he, and so I wanted to catch him on the kayak and get a video of him and see how he was acting from the shorelines. I'm riding right here. I'm going to ride and I'm going to see this uh, older gentleman who's standing next to a square body. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to keep riding. You guys aren't going to see this, but I have a square body 1980 uh, GMC Suburban 2500 in my garage. I'm working on So I saw this square body right here and I chatted with him about 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. He's telling me the whole story of the square body and it was really cool. And we were just talking about him anyway. And he was just out fishing. <clears throat> Um, I really like Loveland. If you're in Colorado, I think Loveland is a great city. I think they have a cute downtown. I think they have a nice neighborhood. I think that it's very walkable. It's one of those family friendly cities. Uh, Loveland, not all of Colorado, not all of any state, but you, you know, especially if you have kids or you're, you know, older adults and, um, Certain areas are good for raising kids, and I believe Loveland's one of those cities that is family-friendly and built on families. You can see it when you see so many little kids. It's a great place to get your first house, to get a nice house, to be able to send your kids to decent schools. Um, police presence is all. You see police everywhere. I mean, just, just the presence, I mean, I'm talking about. Um, I think it's clean. Do they have homeless? Yes, most of Colorado does like most states, but, uh, seems like it's pretty controlled. Like I said, it's a nice area. I, I enjoy coming up here. Plus it's close to Bucky's. <laughs> Bucky's is right. Not too far away in Johnstown on your way up here. Lots of lakes. You got this place and you got St. Varane, um, state park, which is, uh, on your way before you get here too, which is another one. Um, this is of course is pedal assist. I'm getting ready to stop.
So I stopped to help her with the kayak and the dog. She really didn't need my help. But I went ahead and made a video. I was going to make a little video just catching Max on his time. It might have been his first time on a kayak. You'll see at the end of the video that. Um, so anyway, I stopped. I'm going to start heading back. Now getting back to this e-bike. Is this the best e-bike? Absolutely not. Is it a decent bike? Def uh, definitely. Especially for what it costs. I've seen a lot crappier e-bikes um, for more money. Um, this is an unsponsored video. They did not send me. No company sent me this bike. I ordered it. I bought it out of my own money. I actually, I bought it out of money from YouTube. So I want to thank everybody who watches my video, clicks on the links. That's how I was able to buy this e-bike. So, so I think it's a, it's a decent e-bike. I think it's pretty good. And actually, actually considering the price, you couldn't really go wrong, especially if you're just getting in the e-bikes and trying to decide if you're going to really enjoy it. What's the use of spending $2,000, $1,500, and you realize, eh, I don't really like this. But what's to say you spend four or $500, you get one, you're like, okay, this is pretty good, and maybe I upgrade, or maybe this bike lasts me a few years, and this is the size I need, and it works for my lifestyle. Maybe I have a small car. Maybe I have a Fiat or something like that, and um, I need a smaller bike. And uh, and I think just the form factor of it and being smaller, it is easier to carry around. Throwing this in my camper when we hauled, because we went to, we were actually camping. We had a higher sided pop up camper. It was real easy. Plus my scooter uh, versus the electric XP, which is a much heavier e bike and takes up more space. This was much easier to travel with. So if you're definitely short on space, this is good. I think it's great also for. Uh, like I said, campgrounds, riding around little cities, you know, just zip ripping and zipping. Um, it didn't cost a bunch. If it, you did lose it or it was stolen, you're not out $2,000, $1,500, hopefully. But I do always carry two locks, by the way. I'm just not going to throw away my bikes. It's my hard-earned money. So so I'll leave links in the description for this. Um, one of my leave, it have give you the option of the 48-volt 12-amp, which is the one I got, and the 48-volt 16 amp amp one which is i believe says 20 to 40 miles on that or excuse me it's it's more than that so it's either between 30 and 40 miles i would guess 10 miles more for that one anyway check it out i'll leave the links good luck um you know have fun get you an e-bike they're great i love them a lot of stuff i see i would never see if i didn't get into this type of uh riding anyway thanks for watching everyone have a good day bye